camera. Okay, we are visible slash audible. All right, and I gotta unpause the animation. There we go. All right. Let's get into this. I've been having a pretty good day. I uh, made big ass coffee cake. Made like a, a pan of like imitation Olive Garden breadsticks. Pretty pretty solid. I kind of fucked up the coffee cake because the recipe called for vanilla extract, and I grabbed a bottle that I thought was vanilla extract. But it was that semen sample I left there last week. No, it was nut. It was nut, but it was pistachio nut, which made it makes it a little odd. But it's um because your brain is expecting like vanilla, but then it was a. Uh, it was, uh, it was pretty good. I had one before this. Um, had, had some leftover tikka masala from yesterday, which was pretty good. I kind of messed that up too. The, uh, the, the spices got a little too toasted. Rocket hot as a. Uh, Render as much fat out of them as you can. Get both sides of the skin brown. Right, right. Take them out. Dispose of them how you want. Sure. Then take your chicken thighs. Cook, uh, brown them. You don't want to cook them through. You just want to brown them on the outside. And get a good yeah, crust on each side if you can. Mainly, you want to focus on getting a good crust on the meat side, not the bone side. Get them all put into your crock pot when you're done. Then, in the same skillet, take some lemon juice, garlic, basil, salt, and fresh cracked pepper. Some, some minced, or are we talking a whole clove? I, I go for squeezed mints. Okay, like you gotta a, press? No, 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 like, um, I buy it pre-minced in, like, a ketchup bottle. Mmm, yep. So, um, and then you want to add some chicken broth. And boil that down in the skillet so that you're getting all the fat with it. You're, uh... Uh, if you want to ahead of time before you do the chicken skins, you can toast your seasonings, mm -hmm. which is what I did, and then uh, boil it all down into a broth. And it'll thicken significantly because of the chicken broth. Right. Um, when it's done, pour that over your chicken and let it cook for four hours on the low. Then, about a half hour before it's done, make a pot of rice with some lemon juice, a little bit of garlic, and some salt and fresh cracked pepper. And just regular rice, you know, two cups water, one cup rice. Bring it to a boil, stir in everything, uh, simmer for 20 minutes. Okay, and you actually measure off your rice? Yeah. Okay, I always do the um, I do the the East Asian method of uh, just fill you put in the rice and then you fill up the water. I mean, it rinsed rice, but like you fill up the water until the tip of your finger touching the top of the rice has the water up to your first knuckle. And that's that consistently is the right ratio. I mean, yeah. With rice, a lot of people are kind of intimidated by rice, but there's a lot of wiggle room. There is, but it's also very easy to burn if you're not oh, yeah. careful. It's, 
the most you get the most you get with that method is uh you more than anything you'll usually have a little too much liquid you rarely have uh too little now. Oh, this sucks. Hold on. Uh, I'm doing okay so far. Shit. Yep. Shit, shit. Wait. Ah, oh, fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck. Whoa. Shit, shit, I just need two. Yes! Oh! Last second. Uh, if I had if I had the the bandwidth for it, I would probably have um probably just stream this to you over like Discord or something so that you'd have a more direct feed of it. Oh yeah, I'm not even gonna try like that's why I wasn't paying too close attention yesterday. Because I knew there was a sick Yeah. So I'm just like, oh, never mind, baby. I don't need all that. Is there a way to get up on this? Probably. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Hey, uh, just had some coffee cake before this, so. Did you see where uh, Tom Morello and Rage Against the Machine are trending today? Oh no, what happened? Listen to the name of the fucking band, right? <laughs> I actually was watching a video, um, I can't remember what the, it is, it's for like a guitar magazine, but uh, they basically like interview guitarists and like ask them about like their, their gear, how long they've had it, um, what they, like specific effects they have and stuff, uh, and there's some pretty cool ones. Um, 
I mean, you know the name of the band won, so that's that's more than enough to know that that statement is ridiculous. Um, but like they had Tom Morello on, and it's really cool the stuff he did, cause like they're they're like new metal, right? Is that how we would classify that? Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll like, take that. Yeah. Oh, since like the very like there's one of the most political groups in in music period like. The fact that their their like first fucking track on Toxicity is Prison System, which yeah. is just it literally just at certain points they're just talking about statistics. And it's like, yeah, they, if you didn't get that they were making a point. Um, but Tom Morello, it's like he figured out ways to like get like a turntable scratch with just his guitar, but like he basically uh, set the guitar so that um the the i don't know the specific name for it but the 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 switch between the the pickups he would have one pickup silent and the other with just basically noise so that he could basically flick the switch the same way you would flick like a fader on a uh turntable mixer while you're scratching it's so cool I, yeah, Tom, have you ever heard any of this like watching music? no i I it's have not so listened to enough Rage Against the Machine. I need to. I need to, especially no, now. No, 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 no. Night Watchmen is, while very political and very obviously political, like Rage. Right. It is not Rage Against the Machine. Look up Tom Morello or Night Watchmen. Uh, shit, shit, shit. Oh. Um, battle Hymns. Mm hmm. Travel. Right. Um, God, he did so many good ones. And I sang to my that's like protest folk songs. Oh, okay. Nope, nope, that's not doing it. I, I didn't know Tom Morello. Like, I didn't know enough about Rage Against the Machine to know who the members were. Right. Yeah, there's very few bands, like, I know the members of. Um, so, I didn't know Tom Morello as being in Rage Against the Machine. I didn't know him as being in Audio Slave, you yeah. know. So, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> but it's so crazy, like, the shit he can do and has done. And you just, you realize a lot of things about Tom through his music. Mm -hmm. One, he respects and loves music. Oh, absolutely. Two, he is one of the most talented guitarists ever. Most assuredly. Um, and three... Ever. Um, I mean, he's 
got a body of work that is just impossible to move. It is some of the best music ever. Yeah. And that's, you know, I would put Rage Against the Machine above the Beatles. I would put, you know, Audio Slave, damn sure, above the Beatles. Right. On any, any day. Man, fucking Audio Slave, man. Some of the best fucking just soulful music ever made. Yeah, R.A.P. Uh, his fucking amazing vocals. Tom Morello's fucking amazing guitar. And just... Wait. What's that one? I Am The mm -hmm. Highway. Look at, like... Just break I Am The Highway down. Uh-huh. On and just at every scale. So, like, quality of lyrics, quality of music, quality of their blending, quality of... Subverting expectations, because when Tom Morello does that breakdown at the climax of the song, that is like that is goosebumps in sound form. Like, oh, I love that. I love that album. I love all those bands. They're all so good. Yeah, I need to listen to more of all of that. I uh. I was very stuck in my musical ways for quite a while in just that like I knew what I liked and I was real broke so I didn't really get new music that often. Right. Um, I grew up on uh, FM radio, man. Like, I had a Walkman with FM radio and I would listen to that every day. Oh, dude, where I went to high school, all of the, the stations were just like stadium country shit. Oh, yeah. where we lived. Where, where Corey and I grew up was out in the sticks, but we were close enough to Charlotte to get broadcasts from there. Mm, right. But not all over town. So, like, if you went too far north, you were SOL. Um. So we would listen to just the only rock station that was available that would play, you know, new rock. Which was 106.5 The End. Mm. And, um, we would do that and hear some new stuff that way. Uh, we were lucky that YouTube was starting to be a thing. Uh, LimeWire was still definitely a thing. Uh, word of mouth from local bands and stuff like that was always a thing. Right. So, we had, like, a lot of access to really great stuff. Uh, MySpace, by the time I was, uh, a senior, had definitely taken root, so local bands becoming more famous was becoming huge for the first time. Uh, you know, this would be the same time as uh, Ninja Sex Party getting huge, you know, you know recognized through hmm. MySpace and whatnot. I believe that's the story. I may be mistaken it for a different band. Uh, I mean... I know, like, Voltaire definitely benefited massively from uh, <laughs> social media becoming a thing and being able to share videos online. Oh, most definitely. He has the same kind of... Voltaire has a similar traje trajectory to, like, a Jonathan Colton. Of just, like, going to conventions and doing a lot Bell of word of... What was that? <coughs> you don't know that joke? No. Uh, do you listen to NPR? Sometimes. I, For like the comedy shows? Ask, ask me another. I do listen yeah. to that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I loved Ask Me Another, but it's a, that's the one by Pippin and Finch, right? Ooh, I don't... 
trying to remember. It was an NPR thing. Jonathan Colton was the, like, band leader. Oh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That is it. I'm, I'm getting it mixed up with Seju. Never mind. Mm. Uh, which was, uh, sep it wasn't a part of NPR, so, like, they bought the show for airing on NPR. Oh, okay. I think, and it was made by a company called Pitch Yeah, Jonathan Colton was, uh, Another, and at the end of each episode, they would anagram everyone's names. Mm. Mm -hmm. And Jonathan Colton, or Colton, whatever it is, anagrams to Thou Jolt a Cannon. <laughs> <laughs> Which I submit is the funniest fucking thing ever. Thou Jolt a Cannon. <laughs> like, it's so nonsensical and it makes me smile every goddamn time. Every goddamn time, I just hear it, I'm like, down the jolt of cannon. Um, but yeah, his his trajectory was pretty much like he just went to like conventions and stuff, handing out his mixtapes to whoever, at, like Dragon Con or whatever. And eventually the right people heard it, and that's how he got to make the music for Portal. And eventually Portal 2. And similarly with like Voltaire, he just like word of mouth would hand out his stuff and um Eventually he got like, you know, the uh the bit with Billy and Mandy, which unfortunately is where some people's experience with him begins and ends, but like Oh, imagine being that person. I mean, when I first found found him, um, like, that is pretty much all I knew, but at the same I I was like fresh out of high school by the time I finally started listening to his other same. stuff. Same. Um oh, it was around two thousand seven or so hmm. for me. Uh, a friend of mine in Corey's name uh, we'll call him Jeebus because that's what his nickname has been and I don't know if he wants his name out it. But uh right. we'll call him Jeebus. Uh, we, we were gonna do a show, I was living on my own. And we're like gonna do a show that I had come up with where I had no like my daily diet at this time would be I would go to Dollar Tree once a week mm -hmm. and buy seven cans of Libby's canned spaghetti. Oh. And then I would have one can a day. Yeah. That was my that's what I could afford, you know. I've been I've been I've lived that life, man. It's no good. Yeah, it sucks. But I was lucky enough. I, I was in a place that had a decent food bank, but it, it was pretty similar food. I wouldn't have known where to look for a food bank. And I yeah. Technically, don't know if I would have qualified to use one. But... Uh, they don't. I I'm only really familiar with the food banks in Seattle, but there it's like they don't actually check. They mostly just check to see that you do. Um, they, they have to have proof of address to see that you actually live in the area. Um, but for the most part, like, they're, they're pretty lenient. Well, um, it doesn't matter right now. I'm in a fairly good place now. But, yeah. Uh, it, so, we were going to do a cooking show based upon the kind of food I've been able to cook by, like, scrounging or saving up for special occasions. Oh shit, that's a big coincidence. I had the exact same idea for a show about the same time when I was broke as hell. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna call it Scrap Iron Chef. That's pretty good. Mine was gonna be called The Broke the Broke Cook, which was a play off of uh, The French Chef, which is yeah. where I came up with my name Iggy Kid. Kid, childs. Yeah. You get it? You get it? Yeah, yeah get it. That didn't sound good, though. Listen, uh, I didn't ask if it was good. I asked if you understood. <laughs> I didn't ask if it was good. I asked if you understood. Exactly. He's been in hot fire. Ah. It's fucking but, uh, mother. But yeah, so... We were kicking around the idea, and this was at a time when... Copyright on YouTube was a lot more lenient than it is today. Oh yeah, I remember when I was first introduced to YouTube, it was as, look, you can watch pretty much any show ever on it. <laughs> I've watched two of the four Crow movies through YouTube. Oh fuck yeah, this in the little ten minute the chunks. They would take a movie and 
chop it into like 12 pieces. Yeah, and it's so all like a little 10 minute point. chunk, bad, fucking terrible quality because it's not even widescreen. Yeah. Or like all of the uh, the Adult Swim shows would always be on there because most of them would fit perfectly into the little 15 minute chunk. That's a good one, yeah. I was, I was ex one trying to think, like, well, oh, what Voltaire song is about food? And that's it. That's the one. Yeah. Well, there's a couple that are about food, but, like... What's the... Yeah, sexy one. What's the other one? I swear to... I can't think of one off the top of my head, but I swear there's... Let me, let me just Google really old Voltaire lyrics. Okay. Box. Shit, shit. Yep, that would be a good one. I think that's what I was pushing for. Uh, oh man, there's so many good ones. But, uh, that's how I... Like, after I heard that one, I was like, I love this guy. Oh, you would love Voltaire. Look up, um... Voltaire, Hell in a Handbasket. Mm -hmm. Oh, that... I want that as a theme song whenever I enter a room. I'm going to hell, he's going to hell, he had a handbasket, like, fucking, it's so good, but, uh, you know the dirtiest song that I eat, right? Uh, yes. Okay, so, I had an idea for, um, uh, uh, YouTube music video style edit of that song, and keep in mind, I was lucky enough to see Voltaire perform it live, uh, just after it hit released. Right. Uh, at a burlesque show in North Carolina. Ooh. Yeah, that's the way to see it. <laughs> so he's doing that intro where he's like, Down in North Carolina. <laughs> like he threw off the rhythm just so he could shoot it, shoehorn in North to get a cheer from all of us. Uh, but he was down in Carolina. I met a girl with a knife. And the premise of the song is, He's been around for a long time, and he's learned along the way. If you want to go on the radio, there are things you just can't say. So I, he thought hard about it, and he found a way around it. Uh, but, uh, I don't know what the fuck you're supposed to do about these guys, because they just uh, take so much health. Yeah. So you know how, like, the premise is he wants to go on the radio, so instead oh, oh, of saying the dirty words himself, he'll leave them blank and we have to fill them in mm. to make it the dirtiest song that ain't. And so my favorite thing to do with that idea is to perform the song. It's like, down in Carolina. I met a girl with a nice, and then just have Ned Flanders fill in the blanks. Yeah. <laughs> so, down in Carolina, I met a girl with a nice smile. <laughs> so, 
I reached down between us and I whipped out my Bible. It just like <laughs> I think that would be the funniest thing to have Ned trying to like clean up that song because it gets nice. like worse and worse as it goes along. And. Yeah, the one that I got into, it was actually because of the, the Nostalgia Critic. It's like a top 10 video of like the most evil characters. And so his his theme song for that was Life is so much better when you're evil. And I was like, this is, this is fucking great. Uh, 1 over 2 says, the imagine being one of those people thing makes me feel like going out of my way not to listen to them. Hmm. Is that in reference to? I'm not sure. I'm very high. I, and yeah, then, I don't, I'm not sure I remember what part of the conversation that's in reference to. But then also says, turns out I heard part of that main dirty song once though. Mm. Yeah, it's a very good song. Oh, certainly. I mean, all of Voltaire. I, I'm i partial to uh, Almost Human and The Devil's Briss. Like, I know they're early ones, but those are those are my favorites. I also, I do like his country album, to be honest. Like, it's that, that classic, like, folk country. Um, so when I saw him live in uh, Fort Lauderdale uh, a couple years back, I made sure to get a signed copy of Almost Human and the country album. I got a copy of his kid's book. Nice. I got... Uh, Is that the alien one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 He looked me in the eye as he signed it. Hell yeah. I got... Uh, uh, well, it was funny when um when he did mine, touch. he pointed out um <laughs> on almost human like he was uh, still like a little too uh, liberal with the Photoshop, and he points out that he accidentally photoshopped his medallion off. Yeah. And he like drew it back in. One of my favorite things uh, is uh, when he did the layer of Voltaire early on and clearly had no, like he knew what he wanted to do with it, but he didn't know how to get there. Mm -hmm. And so it was fun watching him like, work that out. Yeah. And, like, the birth of Horrible Dead and Bakuri. Yeah, I haven't watched, I haven't watched all of, um, Lair of Voltaire yet. I've been working through Gothic Homemaking, though, which is solid. Oh, 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 the, uh, saying, the uh, Imagine Being One of Those People thing hmm. is in reference to when I had said that about the people who had only heard of Voltaire through Billy and Mandy. Oh, yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, yeah. it's more, it's more, um, it's not so much snooty, it's more like, uh, Sad that you were deprived of. Yeah, like we we like, hope hope for the best for you because like it's great music and there's such a yeah. world that you have not experienced yet through it. Yeah, we are definitely not hipsters when it comes to like what bands you've heard of. Oh sure. We we just like oh it's so unfortunate that's a really good one. Yeah. Um, like, but we're never gonna be like Shit. what you've yeah. never heard of the Decembrists. I bet you don't even know who Colin Malloy is. No, like, yeah, less, kind of is less that and more like, oh no, you haven't heard of this? You're gonna have a fucking no, great day today. We got some this. good shit to show you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I respect this wrong. Like, a, fuck, fuck. Like, if you go to visit somebody and they never had, or you never had their favorite uh, restaurant before, they're like, you have, we have to go. Exactly. Like, it's that kind of enthusiasm. Uh, yeah, if you haven't heard Voltaire before, his main, like, his big single would probably be from, uh, Would Be Brains, the Meteor song from, uh, Billy and Mandy. If you remember that, that episode, um, he did, like, the theme song for, uh, the Big Boogie Adventure movie. Uh, Land of the Dead is what that one's called. Um, he's done a... 
like you've probably heard him in a bunch of stuff honestly like he's he's been pretty well permeated into nerd culture at this point um he's in Velocipaster. oh he is yeah. oh we keep getting like recommended that and seeing it around i, I didn't know he's in it, it. Like, it was trying too hard to be a bad movie. Mm. Like, it was trying to parody bad movies. Yeah, that's that's my problem that I have with Sharknado, is that, like, it feels like it's a little too self-aware. Yeah, yeah, it very much so is. Yeah, sorry for, yeah, sorry for that, uh, tone, if that's how you took it, one, that is... I will, I will keep that in mind for the future. Yeah. I improve the tone, because definitely, highly recommend Voltaire to anybody. It's great music. Yeah, um, if you like Voltaire, it's you basically like check. goth folk, I, yeah. I'd say. I mean, he's like, ch like changed so much over the years, but like, basically it's that, like, his, do, yeah. his live show is just him with an acoustic guitar, and it's fucking electric. I was shocked how much, like, fucking stage presence he could have just with a guitar by himself on stage, and it still felt like he had a fucking, like, band behind him. So good. Um, he has worked with one of my favorite musicians as well. Uh, which one? Crystal Bright. Crystal Bright, okay. I've tried to get you on the bandwagon there, but... I, I've been meaning to! I got so much music to catch up on. It is... She's on a Voltaire album. I think the song is Butterfly. Mm. She's the backing the... vocals on that one. Let me get the thing. Yeah. Let me out! Let me out! Let me in! Let me in. Did that count? Did I get... Did I keep it? Please tell me I kept that. Yes. Okay, I did get it. Now, how the fuck do I get out of here? What's it? Oh. Um. Oh yeah, I am getting close to the end of the game because that's like I have eleven of the twelve um uh, empty honeycombs for the oh, entire those game. Are nuts. Listen, just because everything looks like nuts to you. I'm just saying they look like hex nuts. Uh huh. Uh huh. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, this game is a lot shorter than I remember. I mean, I did only play through it the one time years and years ago. But it is, it is holding up. It's, it's pretty much like there's some concessions for the actual like technology limitations, but it is still like a full-fledged Banjo-Kazooie game, as I remember. Um, I'd recommend the first one for sure. Uh, the second one is... Uh, it, it has issues. I pref I feel like it's the better game personally, for my taste, but I know that a lot of people consider it much, much worse in a design sense, and I can't really argue against that. Is it a case of they completely changed the way it's played? It, it's... Is it played? Something else. It's more that it's like, it's still a. Uh, a it's a hard answer to say, but basically, the second game is a, so much bigger, so much more impressive, but that's kind of to its detriment. Partially because, like, it looks amazing and it's super, like, ambitious. To the point that it kind of should have been on GameCube and not N64 because the N64 can't really handle it, and it gets really, like, um, it, it drops a lot of frames in some areas, and I then... I the idea of it. I think my friends had it, like, one weekend from Blockbuster, mm -hmm. and I was like, hey, can I give a shot? I played, like, the first three parts of the first, like, the tutorial platforming thing, mm -hmm. like, whatever, like, the first three things you do in the game, right? Right. Like, whatever that was, I did that, and I was like, I don't like this. 
like, I just immediately did not like it. And well, I mean, fair I enough. Never come back. That's how I feel about um, Conqueror's Bad Fur Day, which a lot of people compare the two because they're both rareware, but they're like night and day of how to do this, like this idea good versus doing it really, really bad. Um, like I, I do, I hate Conqueror's Bad Fur Day because a, the controls are just ever so slightly worse, and that it sh it feels so much worse because of it. Because more than anything, like, Banjo-Kazooie has the most solid camera and controls of almost any game, but specifically N64. Like, it's really impressive to this day what they were able to do with that. Um, and Conqueror's Bad Fur Day does not. And also, pretty much everybody talks about Conqueror's Bad Fur Day like it's an amazing comedy, and it's, uh... Not, it's not really funny. It's it's basically just look at these cartoon characters swearing. It's like that's that's the best you got, dude. So my thing not... is before I played an N64, I had played my cousin's PlayStation. Ah. And then my friends got an N64. We didn't get another console until the PS2 was almost dead. Yeah, same. Uh, it's poor, but my cousin had gotten that, and at one point a Dreamcast. Mm. And so I got used to those controllers making fucking stints. Right. And then my friends came out with this M shaped bullshit. And I didn't like it. Like, it was poor design, and it did not endear me to playing the console. It's. I would say it's not exactly poor design. It, it was, again, it, it was similarly, like, wait... Here's the thing. N64... It is, like, the console that I grew up with and the one I spent the most time on, but... I will be the first to admit that it was really ambitious, and it was a very obviously a... Um... A like, uh, oh, what do you call it? Uh, a transition point. Ooh, sorry to hear that one. Thanks for watching anyway. Hope you get those connection issues figured out. Um, but uh, it, like it, you play like Super Mario 64, Ocarina of Time, and it's like you can tell they were more experiments than anything. Like trying to figure out how how the hell you're supposed to make 3D work for games. And similarly, that's what they were trying to do with the N64 controller. Like, they were trying to make something that would be, on the outer parts, basically just the NES, SNES kind of controller. And then, on the other side, more like an analog stick and four camera buttons to do the basically dual analog thing that we are so used to now. Like, it seems so obvious now to have just two analog sticks to handle cameras and movement, but back then they were still, like, trying to... trying to work it all out and figure out how to do that. And so... <laughs> the N64 was, like, one of the first consoles to kind of have a... Um, a solid idea of how to handle that. It wasn't perfect by any means, but I it was... Say this. Hmm. I heavily judge a new console by its controller. Oh, certainly. Other shit doesn't matter to me. Like, I don't care if your console has higher resolution at 60 frames per second, 1080p. I don't give a shit about that shit, like, at all. Oh, yeah, you don't need to tell me. Like, I I'm fully agree with that. That's the one thing that makes me feel some amount of hope that the Xbox could be a decent console if it had a better library, because it is, like, the most comfortable controller. Not me. Okay. And here's the blasphemous thing. I always prefer third-party controllers. Okay. I mean, nowadays, like, third-party controllers have really come up. They used to be so unreliable. But like now, I have the, um, uh, what is this? The PDP, like, wired controller for Switch. And I, yeah, that's mostly what I use. Because I 
here's how crazy Switch is for third party. With a simple $18 USB dongle, I use my PlayStation controller to play Switch. Yeah, that's one thing that I'm really glad about with Switch having the uh having the the uh, uh uh what do you call them uh USB ports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The US like that's the thing. That's one thing I I will always say the Nintendo is my favorite game company if because they they have kept kept making like really at the very least interesting um strides in video games and everybody else is kind of coming up behind them with that but at the same time Nintendo is very backwards when it comes to connecting with friends and like meeting up to the the modern technological equivalents they're kind of like the app the kind of like Apple in that way of like they're not they're very user friendly but they're also kind of kind of like um, have the edges shaved off to make that happen so for me, only because of the fact that I really liked the PlayStation controller to begin with, mm -hmm. I really, really like PlayStations. Uh, I've gone with a play, I looked at the consoles when Xbox first came out, and I don't know why they did this twice in a row, but when they first released the Xbox, it had this massive controller that I, as a teenager, thought was just un like I liked the Dreamcast and thought this thing was ridiculous. With the the Xbox? The first Xbox controller. Yeah, released. the the chode as they call it. Yeah. Although I I, I know then, that it's like it's not that comfortable, but when they re-released it. Um, I was surprised to hear that uh, people with mobility issues are actually able to use the original controller a lot more easily than they can the um, the the other controllers out there. So I'm I'm glad it has that uh, people have that use factor for it. Like it's it's able to help more people get into gaming. Right, but when they released the Xbox 360, they did the same damn thing. Mm. And like. If I had even been slightly curious about getting an Xbox at the time, I'd have gone with a PS3 any damn way. You know, like, I was glad to have a PS2. I was able to play Kingdom Hearts, for fuck's sake. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I really love being able to play Spider-Man on my PS4. Um, oh, yeah. And, the Spider-Man game. I'm going to have to stream that at some point, because I really love that game. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. My son loves it, too. Um... So, I, the exclusives for, like, Xbox were always genres I don't give a shit about. Exactly. I mean, the only like, real exclusives like... they've had, like, the major one is just Halo. And Halo's yeah. fun enough. Coco's gotten me more into it, but, like, I, I wouldn't like buy a whole shooter. console for it. I don't, like, I don't like Call of Duty shooters. I don't like, you know, any of that kind of game. I, that's not what I like. So, yeah. why would I buy the console if that's its only exclusive? And meanwhile, PlayStation's over here with, you know, fucking Kingdom Hearts. Right. Or, uh, just any of the games that you, you weren't able to get on Xbox. You know, like, even now, I would take, like, what, what exclusive does the Xbox have right now? Pretty much just Halo. I mean, there there are other ones, but like none of what them do they are. What can compare with The Last of Us, mm. Spider-Man, yep. uh, Kingdom Hearts? Which I know Xbox got Kingdom Hearts this time, but I'm just. Oh yeah, point. they did. Uh, but, that's one thing too. Like, I'm uh, nervous about the PS5 because the mock-ups of the con new controller. It's the first time they're making a major change from the um from the, the the form factor like this same form factor i'm using this for the bluetooth on my mac but like it's been effectively the same for since like the playstation began aside from like adding the analog sticks like it's been pretty much the same controller yeah. and now they're 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 uh, they're adjusting the shape i don't know i'm, I'm cautious about it uh, one over two 
Um, doesn't Microsoft put everything on PC now too or something? Yes. Yes, they do. That's another thing. It's like you can get most of the Microsoft stuff on your computer if you have a, a, a PC computer. Yeah. So, like, that stuff just doesn't... Like, I can admit that at the PS3 uh, era, Xbox did have a better second controller. Mm -hmm. But they didn't have anything in their library that made me want to go for that over PlayStation. Oh, yeah. I mean, we have an Xbox One, and we play it... We pretty much never play it, <laughs> to be frank. Like... Um, I used it for, they have a disc that's just like all of the rare games before they, or you know, just like all of the rare games, and I use that for streaming, that's how I stream Banjo-Kazooie, because it's like... One over two points, uh, they tried to change it for PS3, but everyone hated it, so they decided to keep it the same. Mmm, okay. I, yeah, I suppose. That boomerang one? Oh, oh yeah! Boomerang. I remember when they tried to do that. I, I was on Team Xbox at the point when I saw that, too. Mm. It's like, oh, I guess this will be the first PlayStation I don't get. Yeah. I mean, and, I just, uh, I go with whatever Nintendo console, because while they don't, especially now, it's like, for a while, they didn't get any of the cross-platform stuff, but, like, now, they got, they're getting a lot of the cross-platform games. Yeah. And, like... Oh, I say oh this. god damn it, that's flat on top. There we I go. Bought a, I bought a... I love third-party controllers. I, I was a fan of Mad Cats. Right now, my favorite controller is a... PS3 Power A controller. Mm, Power A is good. I love that controller. It's got a textured grip. It's solid uh, matte black. Right. With a... Uh, with lit buttons, so when you turn it on, they light up red. Mm. Oh, it is a gorgeous piece of hardware. It is probably my favorite controller of all time. I gotta say, I one of my things that I really love about the um the PDP, which is pretty solid. I I mostly got it because I I don't want to deal with any of the Joy-Con drift that happens. But the thing I like is it's got the little, like, assignable back buttons, which is... I don't understand the appeal of the back buttons. Here's the thing. The one thing, when I was playing Breath of the Wild, the one thing I consistently wanted was for crouch and, um, sprint. Sprint, I think? Basically, like, two of the things are to L3 and R3, effectively. And I fucking hate that. I hate when they're like, your block is on L3 or R3, which means that if you're trying not to use that, and you're trying to move around, you can accidentally hit it. So, being able to assign R3 and L3 to actual, like, toggleable buttons is really, really useful. I like, um... Uh, it's not something I find necessary, mm -hmm. personally. And I feel like I'm irritated more than anything. But that's me. Oh yeah, I don't use them, like, that much, but for I games hate, like that... I cannot stand to use a mouse and keyboard to play a computer game. Like yeah. if I'm playing from Steam. Yeah, I, I mean, that's why I'm using the PlayStation controller for this, is like, I could play this with the mouse, the keyboard, but... No, no thank you. I hate that. So if a game Sucks. on the computer doesn't have controller interconnectivity, I, it's almost a death note for me. Like, it, it, I've played one game on the PC in the past couple of months that did require a controller, mm -hmm. and that was Anna's Quest. Mm. If you've not played it, it's very good. Yeah, um, hold that thought. I'm gonna take a quick biology break and be right back. Okie dokie. Are you gonna mute the stream or am I gonna be, uh, uh, hearable? Do you wanna be hearable? I can leave you on. Sure. Sure. Okay. I'll entertain the masses. Arms used to force you to block with the stick. BRB. Added customizable control. Cool. 
guys, I gotta tell you about my day while Iggy's gone. Went to the grocery store, got attacked by a dude dressed as William Shakespeare. I was like, what the fuck? Like, no, that's fucking ridiculous. I get home, having lunch, I choked on a German sausage. My day went from bard to verst. <laughs> we gained a listener, a viewer after that damn joke. That's wonderful. I took it that is a sign of quality. Uh, I am Andrew, by the way. I am entertaining you while we wait for our host, Iggy, to get back. Uh... You believe me until the pun? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you thought there was a dude out here just molested people dressed as William Shakespeare? <laughs> that is my favorite story now. Oh my god. Oh, that is good. Uh, shh, she's coming back. Hello? Shh. Yo, Hello? Yo, yo, Is there so quiet. someone in my bathroom? Yo, you're quiet. <sighs> All Welcome right. back, come junkie. Hello. I have returned. Uh, you missed uh, me telling everybody about my day. Oh. Yeah. How was your day? Well, I went to the grocery store today. Mm -hmm. Got attacked by a guy dressed like William Shakespeare. Oh boy. When I got home, I, for lunch, I had some German sausage and I choked on it. Uh -huh. My day went from bark to first. <sighs> I, was, I was trying, I knew you were going somewhere with it. I was like, where, where, where is this headed? You see what one of her two said? I believed you until the pun. <laughs> I'm easily tricked. <laughs> I mean, we are also in wild times, so you know what? I'll believe fucking anything right now. Also, I will point out that immediately after I told that joke, our viewership jumped up by two. Hey, well that's pretty good. Yeah. Welcome to the stream, anybody who's watching and not talking. We are getting through this game. Seen some real bad puns. Oh man. What did the judge say when the skunk walked into the courtroom? Odor in the court? Yeah. Mm. I think this might be the last level that I'm about to open up. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, this is like the end of the game already. Wow. This game is a lot shorter than I remember. Did we? I'm, I'm seeing yeah. four. I don't know how Mine accurate the viewer count. I don't um, know. I'm using the app dashboard, which I feel like is only vaguely accurate. I went up to the garage today. Mm-hmm. Because I needed to change a light bulb. And I had to get my step ladder. Okay. Because I never knew my real ladder. You did it. You did it. <laughs> You're a champion. Oh god. Did I ever send you the bits I did as Batman visiting orphans? Or you sent those to me. Um, I mean, well, you sent me the written versions and like one video of one. Which uh, I feel like you should d do those for like Byte or TikTok or something. Uh, not TikTok. I've got some questionable practices. That's true. Uh, allowing racist common uh, content, but black, I mean, black artists. That's kind of every online platform, though. Like, YouTube also does that shit. Blocking, uh, literally old, ugly, or, uh, what was the third group? Poor. Poor was Poor the third people. group. Yeah, from what do I get? showing up through here. Like, that kind of stuff is, like, I, I can't sign off on that. Ah, there it is. And the company is. China, and I'm just like, how do I know they're not with the government just mining my data from my phone? Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. Who knows? Maybe I will try 100%. Well, that one was really fucking hard. Eh. Nah, this is gonna be casual. I'm not- I definitely am not gonna 100% banjo Tui. Um, because there is a specific thing that is fucking impossible. I have tried it before, and I may- I may, after doing the rest of the game, do a specific stream where I just try and get through that one part. If there's enough, like, um demand for it, but like... Can I just point out that if everything you just said out of context would sound like you were talking about a sex act on stream? Listen... That one was way too hard. This is just gonna be a casual thing. And then... Everything you just said after that. Are you proud of yourself? Oh wow, yeah, this is the final boss. This is this is way earlier than I expected it to be. I guess it is a Game Boy Advance game, but jeez. Gonna have to think of something else to continue with. Uh, oh, I'll probably just play some Dicey Dungeons, I think. I just played Castlevania's Circle of the Moon for the first time in years. Oh, which one is that? It's the one where you're not a Belmont. Hmm. It, 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 was that a GBA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I think I played, like, the beginning of that one. You have, like, the cards that you can buy for special effects. I think so. I, I didn't get far enough to really see much of it. Yeah. Um, so... I played it on Game Boy, and it was a Metro Mini game. I'm not good at those. In yeah. fact, I ate If they're, like if they're done right, they can be fun, but I, I can understand them being kind of abrasive. So, uh, I've never beaten the game. Legitimately. So, I decided I'm gonna play it on an emulator and use cheating codes to have infinite health. I can. Yeah. And uh, equipment early on. Mm -hmm. And I realized that meant I could immediately skip the entire game. Just jump over and over and over into the air because you have the infinite double jump, basically. Oh, so just right. doing the, the sonic boom cheese? Kind of. Because it's an in-game skill that you actually have to use to get to the final boss. It's just, the game starts, you're in Dracula's room, and he crushes the floor underneath you and you fall several stories down. Right. You have to get back up through that same gap to his throne room at the end. And so I realized because I cheated myself that skill already, I could just go fight him now. Uh, one where you're a relative of a Belmar, one where you're some I don't know. I don't remember the character. Uh, he, I can tell you that his basic story is he and the master that he's training under Master's son. Uh, the master is Belmont, the son is Belmont. Uh, the son gets jealous of your skill or something, and, like, Dracula attempts to corrupt him or something. Um, that one. I remember he's like a blonde. That's the best I can tell you. But, um, so what happens is I just skip straight to that Dracula fight. I have done none of the level grinding. I didn't cheat myself stronger or anything. Oh I just no. I cheated myself the weapons and the cards. So oh no, this question through. is about what about a sound, and I don't have the sound on. Fuck. Uh Jinjo? Uh, I hope I got that right. Damn it. Anyway, uh so that's uh Oh, I wound up fighting that battle for like an hour. Oof. Like, it was so long. And I eventually cheated myself stats halfway through, and I still took so long. 
Yeah. It didn't help that the emulator was slightly laggy. Yeah, that will completely... That's the reason I don't, um, try and... That's the one problem I have with OBS right now, is that it's... There's a little too much latency with OBS Link, um, to, uh, OBS. So anytime I'm playing, there's, like, a few, like, a second or so delay before, um, what I'm seeing goes in there, but then my video is... Uh, low latency, so that's immediate. And then when you guys see it, it's a few seconds later, so there's like all sorts of weird delays happening when I'm using um, El the Elgato capture. Whoops. Yeah, I don't. I feel like a big part of it would be if I had a better video card. That would probably help. Shit. I think I gotta start that over. So. I like just streaming from my PlayStation now, or if it's a game I'm playing on my computer. I don't yeah. like to try. Like I don't, I don't have fond memories of my Elgato. I yeah, it's such a pain, and their customer support is real shit. Um, like I eventually found the fucking solution to my problem with OBS Link on my own. They really, like, did not help me at all with that. Yeah. I've never bothered with it. I always, like, check forums and stuff for comments and solutions first. Yep, that's pretty much what I end up doing. That's the thing, though, is, like, I pretty much only do the actual official support for something as a last resort. But often, if your problem is specific enough that you're gonna have to do the last resort. I've never been that bad. I always just sit off the end and get like a response fairly easily. Yeah, I don't know. It's. Uh... It, 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 I think the bigger thing is just, like, there's so little support for doing anything with Mac. Like, yeah. if you even, like, Google... Like, usually you can just Google a problem, but, like, 90% of the tutorials and things you find are gonna be for the Windows version. That's what I found with OBS. It's like, how do you use an Elgar with OBS? And, like, 99% of the videos are for Mac. Or for uh, Windows, and like one is for Mac, and it just assumes that it works. Or like they're they're like use Streamlabs to do this. It's like I can't use Streamlabs. That's Windows only. I could get like uh, Boot Camp, I guess, but like I don't. I I have a MacBook that only has 250 gigs total. I don't want to partition off part of that for one program. Oh yeah! I get. I never asked why you uh, assumed that, but like, yeah, I remember you asking about that. And then Maddie and I remember throwing it away angrily. Throwing it away? I mean, you could sell them. Like, people are constantly yeah. trying to buy them. Yeah, it wasn't worth it. Like, it sucked. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm real so. disappointed with it because, like, while it does allow me to have. Like, it, it does the very basic thing of being an HDMI pass-through. Yeah. All of the, the hardware is fine, the software is what fucking sucks. And it, it works. I do use it for Switch stuff, but it's like... It gets laggy, and it, like, um... Yeah, a after a time it starts dropping frames. I'm uh, not a huge fan, but you know what? Damn it, it's another sound one. Um, one. That, one, know. did you know what sound that was? Do either of you guys know what sound it was? What did you say last time? Oh, it's not the same thing. So. It's a different sound, yeah, because this is basically a game show portion. I, don't, I can't hear the game. Fuck. 
either. Um, because if I did, it would freeze the the emulator. Uh, I'm gonna say Globos. Why did I say that? Oh, I guess it worked. A Globo. Uh, there aren't any Globos in this game. I guess it assumes you know the other games then, and it just has sound effects for the other. Okay. Do you have uh, Twitch Prime? Uh, yes, I do. Did you see what uh, game became available on the fifth? Uh, oh, I have not checked it recently. What was it? Train Daddy. Nice. I think I already had that. <laughs> uh, director's Cut. Ooh. Uh, Dad Rector's Cut, I think you mean? There's, um, came on to Maggie Mayfish originally was her, like, love of that game. Mm. And now watch her YouTube channel, and she is, if you've not seen Maggie Mayfish, she is fantastic. And she's really good at, like, blending the story with a storytelling device. Mm. So, like, whatever the framework of the story is, that she's using. Framing mechanism, that's the phrase I'm saying. Mm -hmm. uh, she's very good at just stirring that in perfectly. Hmm. Uh, she does one. Oh, God. I, I have to send you a link to. I sent you a picture of that controller I was talking about. I have to find you, like, perfect. Uh, Maggie Mayfish video to show what I was talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause, cause she's just um, speaking of Dream Daddy, if you haven't watched it, there's a really great GDC talk from uh, Leighton, Leighton Gray, I want to say, how their last name is, but um, he was a head writer on Dream Daddy, and it's a talk about metamodernism and why. The writing in Dream Daddy feels, like, relatable and, uh, like, fresh. Like, something, like, it does seem like kind of internet humor, but without any specific, like, meme references. And they explain how they were able to do that without it, without risking it becoming dated. And it's a fantastic talk. I would definitely, definitely recommend it. Um, Jory also did a talk about the art which is not quite as good, but it's still fun. Uh, what the fuck was the video she did this in? Hmm. She has a whole series on daddies in film. That's a good one. Mm. Um, she takes apart, like, crappy evangelical movies. Oh. Taking aim at people. Oh no. Called, uh, I'm in love with a church girl or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it is as shallow as it sounds. She's also made a video discussing um, cats right. and how the. So do, you, do you know where the lyrics for cats originated? Yes, it's a, a, a collection of poems by T.S. Eliot that he wrote for his grandchildren. Did you know T.S. Eliot was, if not a fascist, a very big fan of their work? I was not aware of that. And that is what cats is about. Like, the, the poems were very, like, fascist ideals. He's supporting the crown. Yeah. And she does an entire video breaking it down. But hmm. here's the thing. T.S. Eliot would have hated Cats itself because of all the dancing. He has very, very weird uh, beliefs insofar as dancing goes. Huh. And so, yeah. Uh, he... He comes across as a very emotionally repressed figure. 
right? Yeah, I kind of feel bad for him after all. Um, but he would have absolutely hated that somebody had taken his work, applied music, and danced to it. Yep. Says, uh, let me remind you that a cat is not a dog. Right. Now, that language is actually how fascists brainwash you. Like, they state something as if it were a fact that you forgot and that you were dumb, even though it's not a thought you ever had. Hmm. Let me remind you that a cat is not, like, reinforcing the status quo, like, message. That... that's yeah. interesting, because, yeah, that was something I noticed about that specific line, watching cats, was like, they, that's not something they're reminding or reinforcing, that's not a thing that was brought up at any point before that. Yeah, it's, uh... In fact, they, I don't think they mentioned dogs once prior to that in the, uh... The play. And it was also a very, you know, the point being, you are a woman, therefore you stay home with the kids because you are not a man. Kind of. Like the whole thing. Like, you've got the cats divided by type. Uh, right. Like, it, she goes into it much better than my stone desk could. It's definitely, definitely worth watching. As Coco points out, his wife was okay with it because, yeah, she, she did sign off on cats. But thinking on it, like, I mean, if he was like that, I doubt she honestly didn't hold some resentment toward him and could have yeah. actually approved it because it was something he wouldn't have liked. Yeah, he was very not likable. And I can easily see his wife. Motherfucker! Ah! dogs before that point in the musical? I don't remember them mentioning before then. Hmm. At least in the original recording to, uh, Dina. Yep, that's Coco, by the way. I know, I did my music and she didn't want it out there. Hey, hey, hey. I'm trying to avoid naming people out loud. Despite the fact I've called Corey out like ten times. Yeah. But he's shown an interest in being or at least a participation, a willingness to participate in being online publicly. So... Yeah. Whereas, Coco seems to improve her, yeah. Like her privacy a little bit more. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, that's, that's a cool thing. Yeah, but I, I highly recommend checking out... Oh that. yeah, there is that that junkyard scene. They cut that for the, the movie, at least. That that part isn't in there. Uh, another you should rewatch if you're wanting to follow up on Maggie's video is to switch over to Lindsay Ellis' video on the mm -hmm. movie. Yep. I find it goes best Maggie to Lindsay. <laughs> But just because Maggie talks about the stuff that is far more interesting to me, whereas Lindsay talks about the, like, making no movies and why the play worked, but the movie doesn't. Right. And to me, that's interesting, but it is far more interesting than the video of Maggie. And, like, it's just because it's stuff I would never have known. Whereas if I watched the movie and the play, I might have picked up some of the differences there. Right. And not knowing, like knowing about T.S. Eliot and how he created it, and he was like a royalist, he wanted the absolute monarchy back in England, uh, he was a misogynist, he was a... Uh, yeah, I feel like the reason a lot of that doesn't come through with Andrew Lloyd Webber is because he 
specifically it was ignoring any sort of subtext that might have been present when he adapted it. Uh, which position? The one who wrote the music, for sure. Um, he was part of the creation of the show. Uh, well, it's, um, Andrew Lloyd Webber is the, the composer, and, um, Andrew Lloyd Webber is a composer, and right. he will get, either hire a librettist to do the lyrics, or in this case, he just took the lyrics and adapted them from existing poetry. And uh, the guy you're talking about, I'm pretty sure, he's the guy who's at the beginning of the Lindsay Ellis video, right? Maybe, where he says, I'm looking at these lyrics and I say, you know, Andrew, what is this about? You know, he's like, is this about the queen? They're just thinking about a queen? Yeah, They're that was, um, he was going and... to, he was going to be a, um, a director who passed up on being the director for the, the stage play. Oh, okay. But then Andrew Lloyd Webber says, it's time to It's about cats. Hal, it's like, about cats. And yeah, that's where we I left it. I think in Andrew Lloyd Webber's mind, it was only about cats. Well, I, yeah, that's Andrew Lloyd Webber's kind of an idiot, so... <laughs> He's... But, I, I feel like we put too much emphasis on, like, people who are really good at one thing being just overall very intelligent, when in reality, Andrew Lloyd Webber is an amazing musician, but he's kind of stupid as far as storytelling goes. <laughs> like, it, the fact that he wanted, wanted Joel Schumacher to adapt, um, Phantom of the Opera should tell you everything you need to know about how much he understands visual storytelling. <laughs> Yeah, it's it that would be more interesting, and I I can enjoy the camp of the Joel Schumacher Batman's, but like the I Phantom like of the Joel Opera. Schumacher. Yeah, I I can enjoy them, but um the the problem with the Phantom of the Opera is that it's just it's just real real boring, honestly. Like it's just not very well put together. It's better than. Yes, I do. We've actually talked about it on a previous stream, although I think that was before really anybody watched. Um, so, this was a sequel that Andrew Lloyd Webber wrote for The Phantom of the Opera. And it was, it shows that he completely missed the point of the film. Like, his own, so The Phantom of the Opera, the musical, is not The Phantom of the Opera, the book. It's very close, but it leaves out, a, like, it completely erased a character, and it leaves out a lot of important details, mm -hmm. and that's, you know, gonna happen, but it forced in a love story where there really wasn't one between Eric and uh, Christine to me. Yeah. So not only does Andrew Lloyd Webber shoehorn in that, he then shoehorns in a sequel where the Phantom of the Opera didn't actually die at the end, he escaped to the United States and took over a fucking carnival. Like a boardwalk carnival. And he invited Christine Daae, her husband, and their son to come to New York and perform, but they don't know who is him, but she kind of knows, but none of the rest of them do. And so... They figure, they're like shocked to find out he's alive and here, blah blah blah. And, um, turns out that Christine is unhappy with her worthless, successful uh. husband, and she really secretly misses the stalker who kidnapped her and abused her. And turns out that was his son the whole time, implying that he. Fucked Christine when she was uh, still, you know, trying to escape him, and that that kid is his kid. And so they get uh, her husband out of the picture and raise the kid together happily ever after. 
And that is the most self-insert fanfic I have ever heard. Because he wrote that simply so he could get the girl to play Christine, whom he clearly has a thing for, to come back and play the character again. And I'm just like, uh, am I the only one seeing this? Like, I, I can't be the only one that's seeing this. And it's just such an uncomfortable thing to watch. Like, unfold. And the songs suck. Yeah. The story sucks. Like, it shits all the way. Like, it's another fuck he doesn't get what he's looking at. Like, because he absolutely does not get the point of the original book at all. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. Is like he's he's a good musician, but that's kind of it. And expecting him to be like this all-around amazing, um, like genius is kind of yeah. You don't get Danny Elfman and Tim Burke in one. It's one or the other. Yeah. Not not everybody can be a Lin Manuel Miranda. Yeah. What is it? Sensible portions, garden veggie chips, pizza flavored. Oh. They're veggie chips. They come in like a Pringles can. Mm -hmm. And like this one is made with potatoes, tomatoes, and carrots. As the chip. And then it's seasoned with like pizza seasoning. Nice. My thing with pizza flavored stuff is that far too often it's just an excuse to make it very tomatoey. This is kind of that, but it's seasoned. It's not just tomato. Okay. Oh my god, by the way, talking of pizza, and all that, we found the perfect pizza place. Um. Hold that thought just a moment. Uh, one over two. I don't know how good a writer Min Lin Manuel Miranda is, since his most successful work is based on history. I mean, he adapted history, but like, there's still it, with Hamilton, like, there's still a lot of his own artistic license and his own personal perspective on history. So like, it is more than just like a textbook. It, it is a whole story, and it is, like, empathizing with the actual, like, personalities and characters of these larger-than-life figures that existed back in, in the beginnings of America. But you were saying, uh, about, about pizza? We have found the perfect pizza place. Mm -hmm. Called the Santes. Mm. Like, by Sante. Okay. They have a Philly cheesesteak pizza. Not as good as a real Philly cheesesteak, but it is fucking delicious. Right. Uh, I have ordered uh, you know, my usual, which is black olives, peppers, onions, uh, and pepperoni and sausage. Black olives is what I Damn it! Basically, like what most places would call a supreme. Right. And they also have. I, yeah, anything, anything log is, a uh, not really an appetizing name. What if I told you it started with an egg roll? Okay. Filled with cheese and pepperoni from deep fried. Huh, so like a wonton wrapper. Yeah, filled with cheese and pepperoni, like an egg roll. Deep fried. It is amazing. The pizza's better than half-baked was, which for a long time was my favorite, and then they kind of went to crap. Mm. 
we only ever had them the one time and they were pretty good. Yeah, but it wasn't as good as it used to be. They changed names. Mm. From, uh... They went from half-baked to super-baked. Mm -hmm. And the, the quality just changed. <laughs> pizza log sounds like what you call what happens a bit after you eat pizza. If that's what pizza shit tastes like, I would eat some pizza shit. No. No! Why must you say these things on my stream? Coprophilia filled crust. It's only coprophilia if you get a boner. You don't have to be sexually aroused by it. I was waiting for a second, I was like, maybe I should make this joke, and I'm like, no, Andrew's got it. <laughs> Fucker, this last battle is way harder than the rest of the game. There's a bit, there's a second part to it that's like a lot more interesting, um, if I remember correctly, but yeah, this part's pretty dull, and it's like kind of tedious because I've gone through it so many times now. Come on, come on. That's something I didn't like about old video games where the boss battle, like, goes through I hate the iterations in a boss battle. They can be good. Um, it. The thing is, what sucks is when uh, one or both parts are not as solid. Like, if, if the whole battle is not solid as a unit, it can really bring down the whole thing. It, it ruins JRPGs, especially Final Fantasy games for me. Yeah, I, I mean... Hate I'm not a fan of JRPGs for the most part anyways, but... I don't hate them. I like Final Fantasies. I like seven, or 6 and 7, 9, 12, and that's the last good one they ever made. Yeah. I hate all the other ones, and I'm not going to play the MMO ones. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, that's another thing. Like, uh, they don't give you any kind of indication of the phases to a boss fight. Which, it'd be one thing if they could let you know. Yeah. I mean, it's become such a trope that you can honestly just assume for the most part. I have not played any of the Yakuza's. I think we got the one through PlayStation Plus a while ago, and I haven't had a chance to crack into it yet. Didn't you guys buy Zero when you came to visit us one time? Uh, Corey might have. I, I did not. That no, might be, no. in fact, that might be the one that came free. No, the free one uh, was Kiwami, which is one. Mm. 
but you want to play Zero first, because otherwise, spoilers for Zero most of Zero. Because it takes place in the 80s, whereas Kiwami takes place in the aughts. And if you play Zero first, you don't get any spoilers for Zero. Playing one, or one first, you kind of know where some shit goes. And so you know what to expect in Zero, where you're going to Zero. And, uh, the only benefit to playing one first would be meeting Majima first in that game. Right. But I kind of think it would be very, very funny from my perspective if you played Zero first and then one. Because that would make me very happy. I'm considering it. I, I will probably do a stream if I do another good thing. Like, after I finish this, um, I'm going to move on to Banjo-Tooie, which means I'm going to have to bring the Xbox back in here. Um, and then after that, I don't have a specific game planned. Yeah, you should check and see if you have Zero, because I feel like you'll want that. Pretty sure we have it. And if you do, you should play that first. I'll stream it again. Because it is very, very funny. Like, the, the whole the Yakuza series is very funny. But, uh, some of them drag. Right. Uh, they're not, they change the format of the game every now and then, like, how things work. Sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. Right. Six is an extremely good game. Uh, one, zero, one, and two are extremely good games. Three, four, and five are not as good in so far as gameplay. And stuff they try to include shit, in shit. four. Stuff they try to include or implement new for uh so I don't and like they always for four and five at least they did this thing where there were multiple protagonists ah. in this. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like there was always like one person in each game I hated fucking playing the story of. And God, I, it was it was a game ruiner for me. Like I won't revisit those anytime because the story for two of the characters were just so awful. I hated them so much that I just couldn't bring myself to play it again. But one through three, or zero through three, mostly playable. Six, fucking amazing. I'm very interested to see where they go with. One, especially right. because they've written themselves into such a position they can't use the main protagonist anymore, and they've already announced it won't be that protagonist. So I'm actually excited to see that. God, you just keep getting these what makes this sound ones, huh? I know, fucking hell. Damn it! Give me the no, give me the sheet. <laughs> Go get you some more Pringles. Have you seen that one protester picture? Which Where one? They have uh, fishing rods with donuts on them, and they're dangling them in front of the cops. <laughs> no, but that's great. <laughs> I imagine the restraint it took not to even stick a nipple. Okay. <sighs> okay, final phase. Oh, nope, second to last phase. <laughs> God 
God, this last boss is way fucking harder than the rest. Oh my god. Oh my god, fuck you. Oh, that's right! Okay, because at the beginning, it's her ghost going into the robot, so, like, you gotta actually knock the ghost out and kick its ass. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck. 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 Yeah, second hot. Second shot. I wanna, uh, just point out, folks, that if you, uh, have any racist statues in your town made of bronze, for example, um, you can use chlorides to damage that bronze. So make sure not to use any chlorides on your bronze statues of racist Civil War soldiers and shit. Make sure not to do that. Uh, also, be very careful not to get any gallium on that bronze because that can permanently damage it forever. Oh yeah, what uh, what things contain gallium so that we're sure uh, we don't get them on the statue? Uh, you could just buy them. On, you could just buy gallium on like Amazon. So make sure you don't go to Amazon and buy gallium and accidentally get it on the statues. Gotcha, gotcha. What the fuck? My favorite, uh... Like, I actually do have a favorite Civil War statue, though. Hmm. Google oh, wait, the... you... Yeah, I saw that on Twitter. The Nathan Bedford Forest one. Yup. That I... I forget this statue every now and then, and then it comes roaring back into my life. In case you don't know what we're talking about, look up uh, the Nathan Bedford Forest statue in Nashville. It is... Oh. As at M. Nate Shyamalan said, it sucks so much ass that it accidentally disproves white supremacy. <laughs> lucked out on that second quiz phase, so, uh, hopefully I'm able to get there and get through that without much trouble. God fucking damn it! Ah, this fucking whole fire gauntlet bullshit. Why do I have to do this each time? It's not challenging, it's just fucking annoying. I already had that growth. I had it removed. They said that growth was cancerous. Well, that certainly is a face according to one over two. Yeah. Um. Fuck. 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 Nope. I. Nope. I gotta fucking do it again, because I lost too much fucking health on the fire for no reason. I gotta say, you're doing a very good job of making this a full length stream when you're at the very end of the damn game. I know, right? Uh, you're, you're, you're milking it. I'm trying not to, honestly. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to finish it, because after I said I might play Dicey Dungeons after this, now I really fucking want to. I've uh, been really liking that game. Uh, I'm reminded of when I was a kid. We had a farmhouse out near where we lived. And they had, you know, a bull. Uh, that was their main source of income. It was like a prize bull. And right. they would just put out a stud a lot. story went around uh, so yeah, I didn't hang out with my friends much outside of school but uh, two of my friends were extreme stoners and they were also city kids and did not know much about life on the farm and so they uh, just saw what looked like a cow out in that field and we were 
were stoned out of their minds and decided they wanted to milk a cow. Oh no. They had a friend for life that all followed them around. <laughs> Do those have to take two fucking hits? It's so fucking unnecessary. Why is this such a fucking long fight? <laughs> Okay, this first part is actually a little more tricky because there's less room for error. Awkward. Yeah, it didn't help that she and I were like 14 inches. We've been dating less than we knew she was talking about losing our virginity. I was like, slow your roll! I don't even know how to use this thing yet. Like, damn. I barely get to use it. You want in on it? Fuck that. Oh no, oh no. Uh, that was the wrong tape. What's well, also fun, uh, if you can pull it off, date girls with the same first initials. So that when you get that tattoo, you can say, no, oh, that's your first initial name. This is why, um, uh, if you get something relating to someone you're dating, you shouldn't... Don't get a name, get something else. Like, I don't know, like something vaguely relating to an astrological sign, or something else that, like, still signifies them, but can be arguable as something else. Mm -hmm. It's a part, but the heart. 
heart is made of two smaller hearts in a sort of tribal style. Hmm. Then I'll have to see if I can find it, but it was a really cool one. Um, I can't even remember the name of the game it was in. There we go. Oh, that was, uh... There. Yes. Oh, shit. Uh, cool feathers? Ah. Uh. Was that uh, not the cottage? Where's Harbor? Yes. Okay, second to last phase. Again, I have a decent amount of health this time. This is looking better. This is looking better. Today's sponsor is Squarespace. You can make any website you want. People think I'm in this for the art. No, I would sell out, you know, fucking heartbeat. Oh, same. One, there was a YouTuber who actually, like, revealed how much they did for the sponsorships. And it's like, yeah, it's like seven grand. So, I, I, I would not care. I'll let you know the Squarespace is fucking place to play. Websites. It's also, it's not no, selling no, out no, if it's still within your fucking principles. Yeah, I was gonna say, I would never, ever at this, well, unless dramatic changes occur, support Amazon, for instance. Yeah, but they don't sponsor small. They don't need it. No, but I'm saying, like, neither them nor, say, uh, Walmart. Oh, sure. Oh, Walmart. I would not uh, support those. Oh, boy. Uh, I'm finding it surprisingly difficult to do well, just the description of the... Oh, I think that might be it. Unless... Is that it? Was that the end? There might be one last phase. I think I remember there being a last phase, or that might have been another part of the game I already did. This is looking like a final cutscene. Yeah, but, uh, so to give you an idea of what this design was, imagine like a tribal-style heart, but if you just cut it straight down the middle, from top to bottom, it's separate have two other tribal style hearts because it was perfectly symmetrical made from two hearts and I really liked that one um, well, currently I have no tattoos but I would like to get that one maybe um, I am finding it shockingly difficult to find and like I 
All right, I did it. That was the finale. So. Huh. Oh no. That's a lot of banjos. That's what every date Steve Martin has ever had said when going to his house for the first time. Two out of five? I don't remember there being a rank. I got two out of five, I guess. Bullshit. I got, like, most of the stuff. I only, like, skipped out on a couple spots. Code of Fanning worked on this. I was just looking through, um, I have a, uh, uh, FL Studio for, uh, mobile on my iPad, and I was going through all of the music I've made on there before. Ooh. It's not, it's, it's rough. Yeah. You think you got, like, the next huge hit, and then you listen back to it, and you're like, alright, think about this, but with, like, really fast drums. My favorite Mitch Hedberg joke, I guess I wouldn't even say necessarily joke a moment, is at one point after he finishes a joke, he's just like, I like to play sports. Wait, no I don't? What the fuck? <laughs> That's it. Mitch, Mitch Hedberg has some of the best fucking work out there. And like, I lament his death insofar as a fan does, but I also think like, he died before Bro, he would have been so good on Twitter. He would have been a genius on Twitter. Like, that would have been how he got famous, famous. And, like, imagine, you know, Mitch Hedberg on Twitter just stoned out of his fucking mind watching anything happening and having a comment to make on it. Uh, like, my favorite Mitch Hedberg joke is talking about he was in Vegas. He was hanging out by a door. Mm -hmm. And a security guard came up and said, You cannot stand there. You are blocking the fire exit. And he said, As if there were a fire, I'm not going to run. Yeah. <laughs> if you have legs and you are flammable, you are never blocking a fire exit. Uh, that's a good one. Alright, I'm going to take another break. Um... I am going to play some Dicey Dungeons, but I did finish this, so that's cool. I'm going to change up my schedule to show Banjo-Tooie for the rest of the week. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to finish off with some Dicey Dungeons, and I just got to get that set up. So, BRB! You did this time. Yeah. BRB.
Okay. I have returned, playing some dicey dungeons. Um, switch this around a bit, because I can't lean back as much. I have to use my mouse for this one. Andrew, have you returned? Hello? Okay. I guess he is still away for the moment, and I'll act, ask him to uh, change over the talent things. But yes, this is Dicey Dungeons. It's a game from last year, I believe. And... Honey, have you seen my Dana Lexima ointment? <sighs> Again, I told you it's under the damn... The cupboard... No, no I don't think she started back. I think, I think we're still on break. Yeah, I actually have time. I'm gonna put my headphones on just in case. Now, hold on. I see hey, you there, one. Hello. Hi, are we, are, are we going now? Yes, 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 we're going. Oh, uh, never... Um, if you could actually do me a favor and, uh, change the stream title and, uh, game. Uh, the game is, is Dicey Dungeons. And feel free to title it whatever you want. I'll give you, I'll give you free reign on that. Um. Does not look like I can. No? Um, I'm not on my desktop, so. Oh, that's probably it. Uh, well, let me... Let me try it. Let me try it through the app. Yeah, uh, try it through the app. It's not always great about, uh, changing the game, but... That, that is an option. Ha! Oh, ah! Oh, no, no, no. I love the, like, half-assed voice over lines. They're just kind of general sounds. Okay, so this is, uh, it's not a roguelike, but it's effectively just like a turn-based strategy game where you get dice, and you use those dice to do, uh, various things. Yeah, Maybe... I can't change it. That's okay. Um, I will do it in my app in just a minute. But with the witch, basically you roll different dice to get new equipment, and then you use that equipment with your dice to, uh... Like damage and all of that good stuff. So let me see if I can change this up. That sucks. Oh. Let's see. Can I do it? Uh, dicey. Dicey dungeons. We'll change that to. Dice. Dungeons. Adventure. Save. Save. Okay, hopefully that changes it. It's not always very responsive. Um... Alright, I'm gonna ignore this because it actually does damage to me since it's on fire now. We'll use this. And we will reroll that one. Nope, nothing good. Okay, but then if I just use the throw, that doesn't damage me. It's alright because he's only down to 1 HP, anyways. Oof, 4 damage. Okay. Um, I only need to do 1 damage, so I'll just put that in there. Yes, I would highly recommend this. It was on sale on Steam a little bit ago, but um, it is just a really fun little pseudo kind of roguelike thing. Like, there's only a handful of different things, so it's not fully random, um, but it is still uh, fresh each time you play. Yeah? No. Okay. Hmm. Oof. Okay, let's get the inflictions out here. We'll roll three extra dice. I'll get a magic shield. Um, let's use that. Damage, do three damage. Third dice. 
So what do you feel about the Capitol Hill autonomous song? Um what is that all about? People on Capitol Hill in Seattle claimed a six block area and put up signs saying you are now leaving the United States when you go in. Oh and hell yeah. Coming, they got themselves a gay anarchist commune going on up there now. Good for them. Um I'm curious if Egan is part of that, my sibling. Uh they've lived on Capitol Hill for quite quite a while. Um uh, Oh, the TV show Cops permanently axed. Good. Who the hell is George P. Bush? P. Bush. Son of Florida Governor Jeb Bush. Oh, so there's a th they're trying to make a third George Bush now? Well, I mean, technically they made it, but... Uh, you should see this guy's photo. Oh, God. Yeah, you know, no, no, I don't want to make fun of anybody. I really don't. But this guy looks like the picture of Heath Ledger's Joker without the makeup on. Hmm... Let me see. It's loading. But that's that's the picture. Oh boy. Oh no. He looks. I mean, he looks exactly what you'd expect a third generation Bush to look like. feel like you're going to get a lot of results. Uh, yeah, none of them are really creepy. I mean, creepy is in the eye of the beholder. It kind of looks like this mannequin head. <laughs> like he does. I mean, maybe it's me, but like... That kind of... Like, maybe I'm just desensitized to horror movies in general. Because mm. I went on my Oh yeah, ooh, we're about to. I just uh, signed up for Shudder. Super excited. If they have... Or, well, you should be able to watch this if they don't on Amazon. Hmm. But a uh, movie called Sleep Stalker Sandman. Oh. I've told you all about Oh, times. right. It's really, really, really... Upgraded. Like, so it started off, it was supposed to be the first in a series that would have made the Nightmare on Elm Street movies an anthology. Oh, right! And instead it was so bad, they were like, no. No, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. We are good. It's as bad as it sounds. Oof. Like, the acting is... But, like... There's a lot of inconsistencies, mm -hmm. so I highly recommend you look at the trivia 
article for it on uh, IMDb so that you could spot all the inconsistencies as you watch. Ooh, that does sound like a good idea. It's, it is hilariously bad. It's almost room bad. Oh, wow. I mean, in horror, that's pretty common. It's stuff that is just ridiculously incompetent. That politician looks like the head I just jumped back. Hold up, hold up. Wait. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, it does. Right? <laughs> Man, uh, sincerely though, like, the fucking uh, Seattle Police Department is beyond corrupt. Like, it's some of the worst shit ever in that fucking institution. I mean, we have Southern Police. We're kind of where racist police were invented. Oh, sure. I, I just... The amount of fucking shit that happens in Seattle from fucking police brutality like I'm glad that this has been able to spearhead those fuckers down I'm really glad that Minneapolis is directly like directly committed to actually doing something when we first moved to Savannah we had a uh, we were there like less than a month maybe Handcuffed, shot a guy to death who was handcuffed in the back of a police car. Mm -hmm. And they said he was banging, he was a threat because he was banging his head against the window. Ridiculous. My, my stance on it has always been any risk, any threat, you signed up for that. If you wanted to be a cop, you know the risk. You know what you signed up for. I don't have any fucking sympathy for you if you're too fucking scared to handle it. That's your job. And like, showing pictures of plastic water bottles that have been thrown at them saying, Someone threw a Molotov at us. Luckily it didn't go off. I'm like, oh yeah, Molotovs for that clear That's gasoline. Even like the bricks and stuff, they're in fucking armor. They're fine. The human hand can, the human arm cannot throw a fucking, like, brick hard enough to do any damage to the fucking armor they're wearing. And, like, the thing is, it was a plastic or water bottle. It's clearly what was water in the bottle. Gasoline has a yellow tint to it and a strong odor. Now, uh, so you would know the answer to this. Do, does it have to be gasoline? to, um, does it have to be gasoline in a Molotov cocktail, or can it be just any flammable fluid? Any flammable fluid will work. You want one that will spread and stick, which means that actually, not pure gasoline, you want to get a bar of soap and hmm. shred that in. Shred it like cheese into this gasoline. <laughs> Let that sit overnight, stir it up, you know. Okay. Get it pretty homogenous. Then throw it. Because what you have essentially created is backyard napalm. It will burn fat longer. It will spread farther. It will stick to what it hits. Mm. Uh, yeah, it, it's just that simple. Uh, again, it's one of those things we were talking about yesterday, like, once you know how things work, it's super easy to figure out how to make things bigger. Yeah. yeah. Fuck. Uh...
really trying to be at least the first part of the witch. God damn it, the witch's route because I need to unlock the last character. Ah, so fucking hard though. Um. I don't know what. Oh my god. So a traditional Catholic with an anime avatar. Mm hmm. Actually, Mr. Columbus was a good man and treated the natives very well. Most of the bad things you hear about him actually began as the anti-Catholic propaganda created by the KKK. Here's a link where you can read more. Ah uh, yes, as my as my brother sometimes says, do you know the Irish were the most depressed people in American history? <laughs> yeah. He knows he's being a fucking asshole about it though. I mean, the Irish did have it, but that's not... Oh, certainly, like, but, like... We got the difference between us and everyone else. After a generation or two, we blend in. Oh, that's right, you are Irish. Yeah, Irish and German. I forget that sometimes. I'm, I'm Irish, um, I'm a quarter Irish on my mom's side. Um, I'm like a quarter Norwegian as well? Oh, my, I mean, I've never done any fucking genetic test or whatever, but like my, my heritage is all over the place. In general, it's the same mishmash of random European than most fucking white people are. Yeah, I'm half Irish, half German. Pretty straight down the line. That's the thing, like, the Germans caught it bad during the founding of the country. Mm -hmm. um, Benjamin Franklin, if you look up Benjamin Franklin's commentary on the Germans, it would read exactly like every Republican candidate running for the past decade talking about Mexicans or uh, Muslims coming to the country. That was something shocking when I watched Gangs of New York. Is like a big part of that is like is just how completely anti-Irish um, Daniel Day Lewis's character is. Yeah, and like there are history teachers that claim, "Well, that's not real," but you can find legitimate sources that have the signs from that era that have the like Irish do not apply. Mm -hmm. That have, you know, these phrases all over them. And the phrase paddy wagon. Super racist phrase. Yeah. And, but, like, I'm a white guy in America. I'm not stirring up, you know? Like, it, it, saying paddy wagon does not have, carry the same heft that 400 years of oppression carries for. You know, black people and other people of color. Because, oh no, yeah, you were racist to my, you know, grandpa. Yeah. But like, but like, now you treat me fine because you can't tell me apart. Shows how fucking shallow your ideals were to begin with. So, like. The thing I always have is people just deflecting shit because they don't. My main things are not recognizing that one oppression is not the same as another. Like, if you are oppressed because of your class, that does not- that is still valid, but it's not the same as being oppressed for your race, or your gender, or any other thing. And then, on top of that, um... On top of that, uh, people f focusing on other people as the problem, rather than the fucking system that is forcing us all into bullshit. Like, that is, that is what most shit roots down to, is that the system is garbage, and most people are just acting in their own best self-interest in a system that makes it so that you can only do that while stomping on someone else. Well, no, it's, it's my design to keep you and me arguing Exactly. Well, they get away with everything. Like, if I own a company and I come along and fire you and say, well, I have a black guy over here who's willing to do it for $2 an hour cheaper, he'll do it for minimum wage, and I don't even have to give him 
this whole time. Then you're not mad. It's not my fault. You should be mad at him for putting me in this position. Exactly. And that's what always happens. It's always the. It's always like, oh, the immigrants took our jobs, but it's like, well, why are there not enough jobs to go around? That's not their fault. And the immigrants, you know, like. You got fired because your boss was trying to be cheap and save money. Not because they kidnapped. There's a comedian had a great bit about this saying, Racists are very confusing. They'll tell you that immigrants are coming to steal your jobs and they're lazy. And they're mm -hmm. like, Wow, they're lazy and stole your job. You're a special kind of stupid, ain't you? But my point is, if, you're, if they're so fucking lazy, still stole your job. What did that say about your work ethic? Yep. But you can't have it both ways, dude. That's the thing, though, is, like, you say that, but it's also, like, even within saying that, you're adding to the, the, the rhetoric. You're, you're doing what the system wants you to of, instead of fighting the people who are making them think like that, you're, you're going up against the people who are doing the best they can in this bullshit system. It's it, we, it, we should not be fighting each other, we should be fighting the people at, up top who are consistently making this shit worse. Right, but half the problem is they don't see it as I am being oppressed. Like, they don't see... For every person that gets it, that like, yeah, shit sucks, there's somebody out there that just wants it to suck for everybody. Mm -hmm. And the, so, like, uh, the person who do blank to own the libs. Yeah. Like, that is a mentality of people that are just out there. And, yeah. Here's a question. Have you watched the movie, uh, The Platform? No. It's on Netflix. It's, I think, came out last year, and it's rough. It's a really rough movie, and it's kind of gross. Um, just, like, in a visceral way. Like, not in so much a gory way. It's hard to describe without spoiling stuff. But basically, the concept is... It's a prison where all of the people in the prison... Um, are... Uh, there, there is a... There, it's basically a vertical prison where there's two people to each cell, and in the middle of each cell is a big cutout. So each floor has this huge long line of just emptiness that they send a big concrete platform down. And at the top, it's a huge feast. It's a bunch of amazing gourmet food and the people up top get to eat as much as they want. And then it goes down to the next level and they get to eat as much as they want and it goes down like that one level at a time until it hits the bottom and then comes back up. And like, just hearing that, you can pretty much guess, like, how how very uh, subtle the political message is with it. That's trickle-down economics in a nutshell. That's, ex it's, yeah, that's, that's literally, it's like that, but then it, like, actually, through the story, like, explores all of that um, through this metaphor of this giant prison. It's really good. It's really gross. It's really depressing. So I would suggest uh, wait until you're in a really good mood, because otherwise it will get you down pretty hard. Like, I have not stopped thinking about it since I watched it. But it's on Netflix, and it is really good. It's just a, a really harsh watch. Speaking of Netflix, mm -hmm. am I the only one that fucking hates Netflix? I, uh, I'm okay I'll, with I'll Netflix. This, like, there's three mm -hmm. shows I follow on Netflix, and one of them I think just ended. So, two shows I follow on Netflix. Right. Um, and what, the one that just ended is an uh, animated series called The Hollow. Oh, god damn it! I've been meaning to watch that. It's really good. That's what um, I hear. I, I was thoroughly impressed by it. I also follow The Ranch. And, mm -hmm. uh, I, I watched the like first two, not seasons, parts. Of it. And it, I, I, I liked it. It gets better after Danny Masters makes. My, oh, okay. I didn't know he left later on, but um. Yeah, because of the, the sexual assault scams. Oh, I didn't even hear about those. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. And so he leaves. He, he dies. Actually. Spoiler.
spoilers. Uh, okay. They bring in Dax Shepard to fill his uh, role in the show. Mm, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of Dax either. But here's the thing. He is really, really good here. And I don't mean in a sarcastic kind of way. I mean, he... Yeah, he, yeah, he's Dax Shepard every now and then. But... Because he plays a, he, Sam Elliott's nephew. Sure. And they didn't know that his brother had a kid because his brother died in the war in Vietnam. Oh. His brother didn't know he had a kid because his girl back home didn't tell him. And so he died not knowing he was a dad, but, you know, he went to find his uncle to learn more about his family. And he uh, fills the role rooster filled, mm. but he has PTSD, and they handle it very well. Okay. Um, yeah, they handle they handle a lot of very serious subjects in a very mature manner, considering the show. Yeah, that that, that is kind of surprising. Um, it is not just that seventy show. I, uh, my, th my thing with watching it is, I can't watch it for too long, because on one hand, when I watch it, it automatically gives me something I didn't realize until I watched it I was really craving, which is uh, a reminder of what it was like living on a farm, living in the middle of nowhere. Um, on, the, on the other side, though, it makes me want to live in that life a little too much, and I, I don't think that's really something I should I should encourage in myself. So I, I can watch it in bursts, but at a certain point it starts to feel a little too appealing, and then I'm like, nope, nope, I gotta stop for a minute. It, it, it feels like too much for a and I grew up, mm -hmm. and I hate it. I hate that lifestyle. Like, it is anathema and antithesis to everything I like. So yeah, same, I but like never... at the same time there's like this deep, deep rooted nostalgia for me where I'm like, yeah, it would be kinda nice to just get the fuck out of everything, go live in the middle of nowhere and start a farm, and I'm immediately like, Nope, nope, I need to not think that, because I I already know I'm gonna hate it. I fucking hated it when I lived in that. But I, uh. I am perfectly happy with either a city, a townhouse, um yeah. Uh, an apartment, whatever. I I can't do like mild suburbia, like that middle ground between suburbs and city. I can do, but I cannot do that. It's going out past the suburbs. I can't. But that's just too much. Yeah. I, 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 I can't do the sticks. I don't blame you. It's, like you get out there, you just start hearing. Nah, 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 nah. It can be nice at, at a burst. When I go and visit, like, my mom, who still lives in the middle of nowhere, it's it's nice for a visit, but it, as soon as I'm like, God, you fucking live like this? No, I can't. I can't do it. I don't ever want to go somewhere where I have to watch the tree line while I get gas. Like, I, I don't miss that shit, believe me. I don't want to have to be looking around like, is there a method about to come around? Mm. 
Oh no. Oh god, it was, our backyard was uh, the size of a football field. Yep, yep, I've done that. I've done that oh, in, yeah, in Washington where it's like real hilly, so yeah. it, like half of the yard was just at a, like a steep incline and you'd kind of have to like do it sideways and like constantly be pushing on the mower so it doesn't flip on you. We had a ditch that ran between the football field portion of our backyard and like a smaller subset of backyard. And if you, if you tried to mow that ditch, because it was where all the laundry water from our washing machine drained out for some reason, and flowed down to a creek that ran through our property, I'm sure that that's a disaster, but, but it was the thickest, greenest grass in the yard, I'll tell you that much. The only place it was thicker was where it grew over our septic tank. It was, uh, uh, trying to mow that, it was thick, it was dirty, and I don't know if you've ever mowed thick, thick grass, it clogs the lawn mower. Mm-hmm, that's what we have here. I need to actually mow the lawn here sometime soon before it gets too bad. Have you ever, like, do you do the thing where you tie off the safety for the dead man switch so you don't have to fucking hold it anymore? No, because that sounds super dangerous. <laughs> do you have a push mower? Yeah. So you know how you have to, like, squeeze the handle to, like, shut it usually? Yeah. Like, and then you can pull the pull cord? We would take, like, string or a loose zip tie and just put <laughs> that handle in place because you, there, you just couldn't hold it that long. Like, the whole time. Because you're... And it's never comfortable. Like, you do that for a half hour, your hands are in agony. Yeah, I mean it sucks, but like I'm not I'm not a fan of uh of overriding safety measures. Uh, well, your your yard is not as big as what I'm describing here. Yeah. Our, so your yard is our yard was arranged such that you had to break it up by into sections. So there was the front yard, backyard, two side yards the creek, and then the football field. So, your front yard and backyard would be about the size of one of our side yards. And then we would have a front backyard, another side yard, a creek, which is this kind of grove we had, like, uh, where just a bunch of trees grew, so it was very hazardous to push them over around. Right. And then, and then the back field, which was again an uphill football field. So your hand, you couldn't do it. Like your hands would be shaking and raw, and like numb after you know enough of that. So you had to zip tie it shut just so you could wipe your forehead every few minutes, or you know whatever it was you had to do with two hands while not restarting the fucking lawnmower. Right. Because you didn't even have a strong enough grip to keep going at the time. You could just push with your knuckles. And that's what fucking we had to do. And, uh, every couple of years we'd get a new riding mower and it would die within a year. Hmm. Like, and instead of getting it repaired, my parents would just, like, get a cheap push mower have us use that instead. I'm like, fucking god. You can't. You either need to get multiple push bars and have us all do it at the same time, or not do it at all, because this is impossible. It was, yeah. it was hell. It was hell push bar. That's why I refuse to live anywhere where I have to take care of the yard. Hmm. I will, I will move to an apartment, a townhouse, uh, I will not do my own yard work ever again if I can avoid it. I, I don't care. I will hire some, a team to do it for me. If it means eating canned spaghetti again every fucking week, I don't care. I will never mow a lawn again if I can avoid it. Yeah. It's just hell. It sucks. It really does. 
Yeah, I'm super dreading it for uh, even just here with such a small lawn, but like it's gonna it's so fucking hot out. Oh god, yeah. It's fucking miserable. It's Georgia down there. Yeah. Only place worse than I've been is Florida. Yup. Do you realize we're coming up on close to a year since we went to uh, fight for the fallen? Yeah, it is nearly that. Something like that, yeah. Oh man, that was a long time ago. God, Fight for the Fallen feels like it was forever ago. Yeah. But that doesn't feel like it was last year. I would like... I would like it if they did another Fight for the Fallen for another cause. Possibly yeah. police brutality? It's a bit topical. Uh, they Yeah, so it, w it would be interesting. I'm curious if they'd have to get. I mean, their budget's probably fucking great. They've been doing really well. Um, but I'm curious if they need another sponsor like Farah and Farah to do it. Probably not. And yeah, I think they got Farah and Farah to do it because they were in a local place. Um, and it was for a local cause specifically. Yeah. Instead of a national. So. I would say they probably don't need one, but they would probably seek one. Or they would seek and work with a specific uh, charity. And they would have that. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna finish up this run and then I'm gonna probably call it night, but hopefully y'all are enjoying this game. I will probably stream quite a bit more of it in the future as warm-up and stuff. Um, I usually do Animal Crossing as warm-up, but tonight uh, I had already done all my Animal Crossing stuff for the day and it was pretty late, so ended up not doing that, but in the future, in the future that is likely what I'll be doing. Yep, we're gonna move on to Banjo Tooie tomorrow, since I'm streaming daily now, and uh, we'll see how that goes. I, that's my favorite of the Banjo Kazooie games, but it's also like really big, so that's probably gonna be a pretty long series, depending on how long I take per stream. Bad move. Oh, did I tell you? Oh. Uh, we got a gift for you. Oh. At the uh, CBD dispensary today. Oh. Yeah. What would be the most Andrew appropriate gift to get you? Oh, God. Like, regardless of where I got it, like, just in general. You can get this in multiple places, not just at dispensaries. CBD Moonshine. Oh, you are very close. Um, you are in the right. You are thinking in the right kind of way, my friend. Is it? Is it a candy? No. Because I was gonna say I don't think there's a CBD Bean Boozled, at least not yet. Oh God. Well, I don't know. I feel like I got Bean Boozled by that orange slice yesterday. Oh <laughs> yeah. Um, hmm, Mo <sighs> moonshine close, uh, you're not far off with candy either, you're in the right neighborhood, I'll say. 
Uh, I don't know. That's the closest I got. Think a little harder. Harder. Like not necessarily like alcohol hard or so, but like like a hard candy. <laughs> no, like I will give you a hint, but this okay. isn't really much of a hint. It's made of a fruit. A berry, in fact. Hmm. Now think of our experiences together. Thinking. I think. Don't think traditional, like sweet berry. Oh, god damn it. Oh, I'm trying to remember. Think. Go to your mind palace. Uh, I have no fucking clue. <laughs> Think. Hard. Hard. Very. Very. Hard. Kind of like moonshine. In, in a way, it kind of is. Smaller like than a bread box. Uh... Uh, uh mm. what would if you were to drink alcohol compared to mooch or to mouthwash? What would you say about it? Like the 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 the, the feel of it. Fresh? Yeah, the, like that would be the to the mouthwash. You would say it was minty, cool, right? Yeah. And alcohol would be, it, you'd say it burns on the way down, maybe? Yeah. Uh-huh. Go with that. Hot. Cold. Hot and cold. You're warm. <laughs> That's a different thing entirely. Do you want me to, like, let's play hot or cold as you figure out the hot and cold? <sighs> hot. Spicy. You're Cinnamon. You're warm. Cinnamon. Berry. Berry, cinnamon, spice. Juniper berry? You're getting cooler. Okay. Spice. Berries. remember what word it was. God damn it, I'm terrible at this game. The word was spice. Spice. Riff with that for a second. All spice. All state? Insurance. Hmm. You're going the wrong way. No. Spice. Five spice. No. Spice. Herbs de Provenance. Hmm. No. Spices. He who controls the spice controls the universe. Damn. You're gonna, you're gonna go. Oh, when you hear it. I know. I can tell. It's something that's. Sh it's. It's super obvious, but my brain is just not making the connection. <laughs> Spicy. Okay. <laughs> spicy. Sweet. Spicy cold. 
Spicy hot. Icy what hot. Kind of, what kind of fruit were we talking about? Fruit. Jackfruit? Berry. Uh, right. Spicy. Spicy berry? Ginger. Wait, is it the fucking, the, what, like, M-berry thing? No, you're, you're on the right track, though. You're not quite piecing the two clues together. Ah, <laughs> uh, there is a clanging. <laughs> there, there is a tearing burn. Coco is probably screaming it from the other room right now. Oh, God. Okay. Salt, salt, and sugar. Oh my god, Iggy! I don't I, fucking know. I, Just I, tell I, me I, already. It's hot sauce. It's hot sauce. Peppers are berries. I fucking. I feel Pepper, like you remember salt, that. You remember that pepper. a lot better than I do. Salt and pepper. Spicy berry. Hmm. Uh-huh. Peppers are a berry. Yeah. Are we talking about when we had the, like, Carolina Reaper hot sauce? Yeah. That, yeah. I, that left a much bigger impression on you than it did me, I'll be honest. The ass reaper? It was hot. It's a little hot. Or no, the reaper squeezes. That's what I had. Hmm. Well, this is a CBD hot sauce. Nice. Is it, like, supposed to be as crazy hot as that, or is it supposed to actually be good? I think it's habanero. Okay. It doesn't look like, uh, the pepper. It's made in North Carolina. Okay. Uh, it's got 50 milligrams of CBD per serving. That's pretty good. We do the gummies sometimes. I can't remember how, how strong they're supposed to be. Uh, the gummies we got that taste awful are... Mm. My guess is, so I have a theory. I want to test some like super hot. I want to test the Reaper squeezes again, mm -hmm. but but while high. That's a dangerous road. I remember one time, um, I got golden curry, extra hot curry sauce, and so it's just like curry and vegetables, and you put it over rice. Right. Um, it was so, it was obscenely hot like not actually something you should be eating kind of hot but i was high and i was like it's am it's so amazing and i ate it and like even though i didn't heat it up it was like from a room temperature pouch onto hot rice like it literally like the skin on the inside of my mouth just fucking flared up it was like that's sloughing it. off that's what happened when i tasted reaper squeezing straight from bottle on a spoon mm -hmm. the skin on my gun started peeling away yeah yeah it's it's um, the thing is because i was high at the time i didn't like i didn't have the response of i should stop i had the response of spicy food's really yummy um when i'm high i don't like food isn't more flavorful when i'm high in fact in a lot of cases it's dulled well it's not that it's more flavorful it's that i it's that I have less inhibition towards eating way less healthy than I should. Yeah, I, I keep hearing people talk about, like, uh, high food and you fully taste it for the first time. I'm like, not for me. Like, I could be just as fine eating broccoli, yeah? I mean, broccoli um, is delicious. People sleep on broccoli, but if you make it right, it's one of the best foods. Uh, yeah, but it's... Pale cousin cauliflower can fuck off into the sun. I don't... Yeah, cauliflower is just like pure starch. So. Yeah, you could just disgusting. have rice and have the same experience. Oh my god, I love uh, curry rice, but I, I have a curry recipe that I follow. I have a brand of curry powder that is amazing. I use it to season uh, turkey roasts for sandwiches. I use it to season rice, I use it to season uh, the curry that I make. And when I, every time I make the curry, I look in the crock pot, I'm like, there's not enough 
fluid in here. Like, it is vegetables, some chicken, and some, and that's it. There's no fluid. It's just seasoning, vegetables, and chicken. There's nothing to, like, create a sauce here. And then I do nothing to it. I leave it alone in the crock pot for four hours. Then I come back and there's a fucking sauce that has built itself from the sweat of the vegetables and chicken. Mm. It's amazing. I'm always blown away by how easy a curry is to make. Yeah. <laughs> the curry is fucking amazing. And apparently, uh... One of the oldest recipes we can find is a curry recipe from Mesopotamia. That makes sense. I mean, it's it's pretty simple. It's just spices, spices, and whatever you want to mix into it. Yeah. yeah it's pretty much unchanged. Like, you, it, it's really more or less the same thing it's always been. I mean, yeah, can't... why why mess with perfection? Yeah. Apparently today is Bill and Ted Day. Oh yeah, they uh they released a trailer for the new Bill and Ted movie. Uh, for some reason yeah. Song of the South is trending. Um that's I that doesn't sound like a good thing. Oh no, what, uh, what's, why? Why is HBO, it? HBO Max removed Gone with the Wind from its platform and been drawing concerns about racial injustice in the wake of killing of George Floyd. Right. And somebody says HBO Max, you're a bunch of damn fools. It features the actor, or like, has pictures of the actress who played the slave in the movie. Uh huh. And I'm like, that's their justification for why the movie isn't racist. I... Guys... Be better. It's and not they're hard. Trying... And they're trying to argue erasing her performance is erasing her history. Like, nah. Nah. Like, she, she was a good actress. And I'm not gonna diminish her performance in that role. But what she was given was racist. Like, yeah. She didn't, like, obviously she didn't write that movie herself, but she took the role she could get because that was what was available. It was racist shit. You don't have to celebrate racist shit. Even if it was breaking down doors for people of color, it's still racist shit. Mm hmm. The Song of the South is super racist shit. Yup. People, <sighs> yeah, people, people really don't get why. That's that's really more depressing than any other part of the yeah. legacy of that film. I'm like, I'm on the win. I never liked that fucking movie. Like, I've never actually watched it, mainly because you know. It's racist as fuck, by my understanding. My family is extremely southern and see it as a good movie. Uh, well, it definitely like glorifies yeah. that that southern no. mystique. The noble lie. Like mm -hmm. uh, Oh, this war is about states' rights. Next time somebody tries to pull that fucking line on you that the Civil War was the war about states' rights. Ask them which right they were specifically pissed about. Mm-hmm. Like, ask them to get very specific for you. Because it was the right to own slaves. So it was about slavery. Um, yep. And, like, the, I absolutely had a history book in high school that referred to the Civil War as the War of Northern Aggression. Ooh. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it is what the South and Southerners who are racist call the Civil War 
because in revisionist southern history, the North started it all, despite the fact that South Carolina was the first to secede from the Union immediately upon uh, Lincoln's uh, election night. They began seceding before he had taken the oath of office. He was not president, so it had nothing to do with Lincoln's presidency itself yet. And they were the first to fire shots at Fort Sumter. So the South started it every step of the way. I mean, it's similar. Like the revisionist history down here is is out of control like everything i've seen like a lot of people were like oh chick-fil-a is not chick-fil-a is not racist they're not homophobic and then you look into the actual history of chick-fil-a and it's like they were born of the southern baptist church and the southern baptist church was born of the pope said hey we shouldn't do slaves anymore that's not very christian and then these catholics in the south were like okay we're seceding from the church so that we can have side Catholicism that still allows slaves. That's the difference. That's the ex only reason that church exists is so they could still own slaves and feel like they were right by God. And so then one of their members would bring fried chicken to church meetings. And over time that grew into a business that is Chick-fil-A. It is rooted in racism. KFC has a chicken sandwich that tastes just as good. Tastes exactly the same. Oh, even the, the Popeye's sandwich. Like, when I tried that, like, I was like, this is incredibly better. I only like theirs if it's the spicy. I can accept that. I just, it, like, the fact that they have a pickle that you can tell was actually a cucumber at one point, that yeah. alone makes it, like, way better than pretty much any fast food sandwich. Yeah. KFC's tastes exactly like um, Chick-fil-A's with one massive exception that makes it infinitely better. And it's not the homophobia. It's not the homophobia. It's something else altogether. It doesn't taste sweet. Yep. I hate sweet meat. It's disgusting. I can understand that. That's what Coco really disliked about Alton Brown's uh, Chuck Roast recipe. Um, yeah, Chick-fil-A, people go bananas for Chick-fil-A. There's always a gigantic line and it's like, I tried it once and I was like, really, this is it? Yeah, and like, they have, the, they have the worst fries, period. You can just waffle get waffle fries, fries and they'll be exactly the same. Waffle fries are the worst form of food. The best fries are shoestring, mm -hmm. checkers. Checkers is good. Uh, any seasoned fry is already better, so. Um, Popeyes, Burger King, and then the rest are all garbage. Fuck McDonald's fries. Arby's curly fries get honorable mention. The thing for me with Chick fil A was always that no matter how good it is, it's like they were directly contributing to the death of LGBT people with the organizations they were donating to. So already, no, no going, period. And then, like, as soon as they stopped doing that, it's like, uh, I still don't trust them, because they still did that for decades, and then, of course, they showed their true colors again because they are backing the cops in all of the protests, and that's, like, and I'm not fucking, entirely come on. Yeah, so. they could just be doing it under the table now. Yeah, they're probably doing it privately instead of corporately. Yeah, so. or through, like, some kind of fence. Yeah. All right, all right. Just because you don't, you know, financially go out and support it, that means that you're not, you know, still a fucking bigot. Exactly. So, uh, getting caught doesn't mean you change your ways. So, mm -hmm. for me, if I'm on chicken, Popeyes, yep. if it's bone-in. Oh, yeah. Coco can't handle bone-in, but, like, 
That's, that's, they definitely, like, KFC does not hold a candle to Popeye for a lot of stuff. They're second only on chicken. They're only on chicken. Their fucking sides, KFC, is trash. Popeye's has the best biscuits, because they mm. actually sell biscuits. The biscuits Bojangles. are great. Bojangles has fantastic biscuits. I still haven't been to Bojangles. Uh, the chicken is okay. There's, they really shine with their sides and their uh, breakfasts. Okay. Oh yeah, they and do they have serve breakfast. Work, and they serve it all day long. As any self-respecting restaurant should. Well, their, their whole argument at one point was, we're not ashamed of our breakfasts. <laughs> That's the that is one of the like bigger things about the um the pandemic at the moment like uh the fact that like Taco Bell stopped serving breakfast in my area because of it like it's a minor inconvenience and I could honestly make that at home so easily but like I just if you want, if I just you want, want a good breakfast go to Bojangles get a sausage biscuit get a bacon egg and cheese biscuit and I'll say this I hate eggs. Bojangles is the only place I will buy eggs and eat them. Because every Bojangles cooks them the exact same way. And they cook them the exact way my grandmother cooked them. And no one else can replicate it except Bojangles. They're kind of fried, kind of half assed scrambled, um, kind of greasy, round around the edges. I can't do fried potato anymore. I realize that's it, it gives me crazy acne. They add all oh, this is acne per bite, but it's worth it because it's uh, they add onion mm. and pepper mm. in the mix. And it's is this like a bell pepper or no, no, no. cracked black pepper? Oh, okay. In the potato mix, and it's amazing. They are the, like, Maddie's favorite thing anywhere. And they have excellent biscuits. They have, uh, the best sausage biscuits out there, but I can't have them anymore. Can't have the bacon biscuits anymore, so I have to get their tomato cheese and chicken biscuits, which is amazing. Um, they, they've got really great breakfasts, and their sides are Popeye's dirty rice is good. It's not as good. Yeah. Popeye's biscuits aren't as good. I will say, churches sucked on everything except their biscuits. Okay. The churches was like a Popeye's or Bojangles biscuit but with a honey butter. Yeah. And it was, it was okay. Like, I didn't eat. That's the only thing that churches make that Maddie and I did not eat. Yeah. The, the biscuits were fantastic, but they were not good enough to go back for. And it was just like, like, have you ever had fried chicken from a grocery store? Yeah. Yeah, like, Publix has decent fried chicken, but most places it's just like the blandest chicken we've ever had. Mm-hmm. That's what churches is. Yeah. Yeah, that's another spot I never had. Uh, it's it's overpriced for what it is. It's okay, but I never want to go because it's always just like way more than I'm willing to spend for what I get. I will say they have uh like fried cheese curds. Those are nice, but otherwise. Eh. Freddy's has those and Culver's has those. Hmm. And Freddy's are the better ones. Okay. Col Freddy's has the better cheese curds and sides. Culver's has the better burgers. Um, and I just recently discovered both of those. 
Uh, I had Freddy's for lunch today, in fact, because I wanted those cheese curds so damn bad. <laughs> but, like, we, see, we found Freddy's by accident. And my girlfriend and I were like, let's try that out. And so we did. And then we started getting ads for a place called Culver's that looked fairly similar, so we were like, let's try that out. And we drove out to it, it was a lot farther away. So well, it was far enough that we'd go like once a month, but not so far that we wouldn't go at all. Sure. And so we go out and we get the burger, and we were apprehensive because they're called butter burgers. Hmm. But that just means they butter the buns and then toast them. Oh, what? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I figured it'd be like butter beasted yeah. or something, but... We're like, <laughs> Yeah, you form the patty around a slab of butter. I mean, like a I tried at Kiev. least once. Like a, a beef Kiev. <laughs> but like, nah, it's pretty good. Um, the Bojangles will hold a soft spot in my heart for years. Hardee's used to be good before they got bought up by Carl's Jr. And oh yeah, you've talked about that. Yeah, it, they suck now. They, they did have a biscuit that I tried called the Monster Biscuit. It was three slices of bacon, cheese, sausage patty, cheese, fried egg, cheese, ham, like sliced deli ham. Mm. One biscuit. It was good, but like... A lot of cholesterol and salt. Yeah. And none of the flavors, like, like it was kind of like watching that scene at the end of Terminator 2, where the cop Terminator gets thrown and the liquid in his face comes up and morphs through all the faces he's pretended to be. That scene. Never yeah. That movie. It's like that with the flavor equivalent, like ham, egg, bacon, sausage, ham, bacon. <laughs> cheese biscuit. Just like, a quick it, tour of everything you've ever eaten. Yeah, it's just a, a quick tour of those flavors. They don't merge and become something better. They just... But, that was it. There's your biscuit. Oh. You paid for this. Enjoy your heart attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I swear to God, it was a lot of biscuit. Like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. oh. It's amazing we're drawing in the, uh, the viewers with this conversation. Like, I was gonna say, yeah, they jumped a little bit. Um, I'm probably gonna do this run. I'm hoping to get either I'm gonna get to the boss at the end of this or I'm gonna lose, but in either case, this is gonna be the last run and then I'm calling it a night. This has been a pretty long stream, like three and a half hours. I usually don't go much past three, if even that. You went what, two yesterday? Some, uh, like, a little over three, I think. Or, like, about about three. Yeah, I've been checking the, the stream summary that they send me. I'm taking, taking it mildly serious. How do you feel about stealth games like Spider Cell or Sly Cooper? I liked Sly Cooper a lot. Um, I feel like the fact that it's that that one is uh, so cartoony and thus can be a little more clear about how the stealth works really improved on it because a lot of stealth games there's a little too much a little too much wiggle room and whether or not you're hidden and whether or not like different characters can see you uh, I, I can like them but a lot of them I'm like just kind of meh on I <laughs> like, a lot. Sure. I think stealth missions in games are the worst things ever. And the idea of an entire game built around a stealth mission infuriates me. Like, I played Metal Gear Solid on the PlayStation 1 mm -hmm. by just going whole hog into everything. Yeah. Well, you gotta, that's one of the things, um, I think Yahtzee Kroshaw actually pointed this out, but it was like, if you, 
if you make a stealth game, you have to A, be able to clearly see when you are hidden versus when you are visible, and if you are caught, you need to have the ability to fight your way out of it. Because otherwise, it's yeah. just going to be frustrating. Yeah, I hate the stealth game where getting caught is not a medium failure. Mm -hmm. Unless it's quick. If there's any load time, it's infuriating. Oh, like Assassin's Creed. Up until uh, recently, they had them in every game and they were the fucking worst. Yeah. They like, they grind a fun game to a complete halt. And oh. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them with a passion. Ugh. And they're, they're just terrible. Yeah. And the game I'm playing now, Judgment, which is a spinoff from Yakuza, mm. has implemented it, but they've done it in such a way that it's a lot easier to play. Uh, there are highlighted hiding areas that have blue neon squares floating around them to let you know where to go. Oh, uh, thanks. Thank you, Toonfish, for uh, following. I just noticed that that happened. Thank you very much. I'm trying to get anybody who's watching who isn't followed, please do so, because I need to get up to 50 to get to affiliate. Um, but you were saying? Uh, they implement it in a way that's very easy to get behind. Mm. But I still fucking like hate it because it just like it never feels like an integrated part of whatever game it is. It yeah. feels like we need to stretch this by a half hour. That Let's it's the same with like an escort mission where it's like, oh, we need to change yeah, up our, we need to change up the mechanics, get you know, make a little variation to get rid of the tedium of the main mechanic. And it's like, it can work if they actually put as much effort into that as they do the rest. Like... I hate escort missions. Yeah. I will Any say... It has when I give up on it. I, I walk away. I do not do them. I liked the stealth in Spider-Man, but I mainly like that because you are actually a superhero, and the mobility, the, like, three-dimensional mobility that Spider-Man has makes it so much more interesting than just someone running around on the ground and hiding behind stuff. Like, actually being able to leap to different layers and, like, yeah, try and but... find the exact right spot. Like, that was really satisfying. But that's also, yeah. like, a very unique take on stealth. No, it's not, though. No? No, it's the same... It's the Batman Arkham game style. Oh, yeah. I never played those, so... It's it's exactly the same. It was, you, it was fresh is... to me. So, like, there's a... What a uh, scene I remember well with a construction site where you had to leap around in the dark from lamppost to lamppost. That is 100% an Arkham City and Arkham Asylum thing. Yeah. Like, the 100%. And it sucks because Spider Man can stick to anything. There's no reason he should be sticking just to your know, lamppost. You should be able to. Have him like hang off a wall in a shadow, or you know, crawl under somebody on a grate. You know, there's things that Spider-Man could do no other hero could, and we don't. And, uh, a game that actually utilized this mechanic that I'm trying to describe well is one of the Alien games, hmm. where you could play as the Xenomorph, because you could actually use walls as a stealth item whereas in spider-man you don't really like i mean you can it's just way more difficult exactly it's not well integrated yep okay so. well with that i am gonna finish up the stream here so thanks to everyone who's watched thanks to everyone who is watching now thanks to everyone who watches in the future on the YouTube archive, which you can find down below on the browser version, or past broadcasts, which is here on the browser version. You can check out uh, my Twitter, which I have a panel for down below on the browser version, or at IggyDKid, and I will tweet out whenever I'm doing another stream. We're going to switch to Banjo-Tooie starting tomorrow, so if you like that game or if you're curious about it, come check it out. And yeah, go check out that YouTube. Check out my personal YouTube. I have a really big movie review video coming out soon i need to start editing that 
sometime soon because I filmed it. I just need to actually edit it down to be a watchable length. Um, yeah, and please, if you haven't followed, follow and come back again sometime later. Thanks again. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye. Oh, where's my mouse cursor? Oh, it's on the other screen.